As you guys can see here, I do not have that much room at the back of my garage. You can see the outboard is super close. So wouldn't it be nice if I could just gain even just a foot so I could pass through there? Wouldn't that be great? Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Dan Richard Fishing. And today we're going to be in the garage again, doing some more work. I'm pretty excited about this one because this is a pretty big project. Uh, this is going to be over the course of several days because we've got to do some painting, but I will be installing a fold away hinge kit for the tongue of the trailer here. So uh, today we're going to be actually chopping this off, which is a bit nerve wracking. I'm a little nervous about that one, but we're basically going to go through the process of cutting this off, you know, getting all these parts cleaned up, cleaning up this rust, doing some painting and uh, basically save myself, a, I don't know, a foot and a half, almost two feet. Uh, at the back. So if you guys have wanted to do this before, you want to see the process of how to install one of these hinge kits, stay tuned. I'm going to show you guys how it's done. All right, let's do it. Now, believe it or not, guys, it's actually May 9th today, I believe, or May 8th. It is snowing outside. There's like a full on blizzard going on outside. So I'm not going to open up the garage door. Uh, so we're going to work in this confined space. So the first thing we need to do is get some of the stuff out of the way that's going to be in the road. Obviously, the first thing we need to do is remove the wiring, which goes the wiring harness goes inside the, uh, the steel. So and it comes out back here. So we got to take that out. Obviously, we don't want to cut that in half. Um, I'm also going to take off the whole uh, the whole tongue attachment here. And ideally, what I'd like to do, I'm not going to, but if I had some jack stands, which I don't currently have, I would actually put the jack stands further down the trailer and I'd like to remove this completely. Um, but I don't think it's super necessary. I would have liked to have removed this so I could paint all around it, but uh, it's not really super necessary right now. So I'm gonna leave this on uh, and we're just gonna cut it off here. I am gonna use a compound saw. I, wanna, I want the cut to be as straight as possible and as clean as possible. So I'm probably gonna remove the spare tire so I can get my compound saw here. So first off, let's get started. We're gonna cut this off. Uh, we're gonna unbolt this. Uh, get uh, the saw over here and see if we can't set up the saw so I can get a nice clean cut. So let's ch let's uh, let's get that started. And yeah, I'm a little scared, guys. I've never done this before, so a little spooky, but I don't think it's too complicated. We just need to measure twice, cut once, because uh, there are no do-overs. Although I do have a welder, worst comes to worst, but let's try not to <laughs> get the welder out. All right, let's go. All right, we're just gonna take all this junk off the wiring here so we can get at it. The problem with these trailers is this is a these. These Princecraft trailers, these painted trailers, unfortunately have uh, a real nasty habit of getting rust very easily. And there are splotches of rust over the entire trailer. So eventually this will need to be replaced, um, assuming I keep this boat. So we'll do what we can, but uh, for now we just gotta fix the basics and make sure everything is working okay. All right. So we cut that off, now I'm going to pull it through. I think there's about five generations of repairs under here. Alright, so now we're going to get the tongue off, okay? So now we're going to need a couple of bolts. Uh, we're going to need, they are three quarter inch. So I got a socket here and I'm going to get a three quarter inch wrench for over here. So let's get that going. Kind of makes me want to go get the impact pneumatic gun out here get the power tools out so guys we're going to use a wire uh turning wheel brush to uh, get the rust off of all these because there are there's a lot of surface rust so we'll get this all cleaned up there we go there you go that's off it's pretty dirty now what's cool is that now that we've taken that off we can actually test fit to make a thousand percent sure that the fulton uh i got a three inch um, hinge assembly that it fits on here properly. So let's take it out and we'll, uh, we'll just put it on real quick just to make sure it fits over the tube properly, nice and secure. So here's a section of the assembly. So we can just pass the chains through it. Ooh, that is snug, guys. We might need to, yeah, that is super snug. So we're, we're gonna need to take uh, the mallet, a rubber mallet, 
and bang that on. It will go on, uh, but it's nice and snug as it should be. So the next step is to make sure we're gonna be cutting this. We're gonna make sure that this is nice and level, okay? Always start everything you do when it comes to cutting or building, you know, a foundation, you name it, always start off with a level base. So we're gonna level this, make sure that it's perfectly level, and then we're gonna adjust the saw so that we can get the saw in here and get a nice level straight cut. All right, let's do it. There we go, we're level. Beauty, all right. Now we're gonna just uh, get the saw in here. I'm gonna see if I can get the saw somehow onto this unit. Uh, and level, okay, next challenge, let's do it. Okay guys, so the next part is uh, getting the saw ready. So I took the old blade off here, there's the old blade, and I'm gonna put a steel cutting blade off. So this is a cutoff wheel for steel. All right, there you go, costs about 12 bucks. Now, pro tip, when you're handling these things, okay guys, put gloves on, because there's these little, tiny little mesh pieces that come off, that it's like little metal slivers in your hand, it sucks. So wear gloves when you're handling this, okay? And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, install this onto my saw and uh, we're good to go, okay? So cut off wheel. You can use a grinder. Uh, you know, there's different things you can use. You can use a grinder. You can use a reciprocating saw. Uh, what do they call it? Sorry, a sawzall. Uh, you can use a sawzall with a steel blade, but that, good luck keeping that straight. The best thing you can do is use a compound saw uh, or I would, I would prefer a grinder over a sawzall but if you have a compound saw, you can borrow one, get it, and the blade costs like 10 bucks, okay? Before we uh, get started here and we get the saw put in here, I'm going to uh, go ahead and figure out where exactly I wanna put this guy so I know where I'm gonna put my cut line. Right about there. That'll give us enough room to install it. And if I need to do some work on here, I can. And so that'll put our chop line right here I'm gonna grab my square there. there we go okay let's get the uh let's get the saw in here okay guys i've got it all set up i've used some wood and stuff to get it all set up i can't get the saw all the way in because the uh this is blocking me so i've put a piece of two by four in behind and i've shimmed it so i'm hoping it'll just cut through everything i couldn't quite get it right at my line but it is right in front of it by about a quarter of an inch. So it's good enough for what we're trying to do. Let's do it. <laughs> there we go. That's a little scary, guys. <laughs> All right, hopefully we didn't screw anything up there. I'm kidding, we're good. Whew, okay. Okay guys, our cuts are done and I'm just test fitting the, uh, the different pieces. So you can see I've got one bracket on here, I've got the other one on here. They're all the way in. Let's give it a try. Just a test fit. There you go fellas. What do you think guys? That'll do her. All right, so now while we've got this on and uh, I do have it nice and straight here. So now what we're gonna do is I'm going to uh, go ahead and draw where I want the holes to be, okay? So we're gonna just use a template and uh, draw it on there. Um, this guy I can put on a drill press. This guy here, not so much. We'll, uh, we'll have to see how we're gonna get at that. I don't think I'll be able to, I'll have to do this by hand from the bottom and the top. But uh, yeah, so let's mark where the, uh, where the holes are gonna be and go from there. Now guys, while I'm doing this, one thing we need to discuss is safety. And it's very important on these that it changes how you configure your safety chains, okay? So your safety chains obviously are what connect the trailer to your vehicle in case the tongue breaks. And it's super important that you understand that there's a difference when you add this. So, as you can see on here, once we've got this on here, you can see the chains are here, okay? This is where it always was, because if, if this snaps, if, the, if the, the tongue lets go, this is still attached to the truck. 
But now we have a new failure point, okay? And it's this. So there needs to be a set of chains that goes from here to this guy. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can, uh, now it doesn't come with a kit for chains, so I'm gonna have to add it. Now I don't have it on me right now. Um, before I finish this video, if I get a chance, I will uh, go and pick up the chains. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll just kind of do this as is and I'll add the chains afterwards. But you wanna drill through here and add your chains or on the bottom and the chains need to either connect to the chains that are here and then these chains go to your vehicle or if you have a bracket here, uh, sort of like a bracket that comes down, your chains would go from here underneath, go through this bracket to support the chains and then they connect to your vehicle, okay? So very important that this is connected to these chains that go to the vehicle or directly to the vehicle, okay? So um, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna start doing this part here, but eventually we will need to make that adjustment, okay? It's very important before you start towing this that you readjust your chains. Now, the Fulton uh, fold-away system, when you buy it, doesn't come with the, the, those parts, but in the instructions there are photos that show you how to configure that, okay? So make sure you do that. Okay, so these are ready to come off now. I'm just gonna make a little X here so I remember which part goes on the bottom. And there we go. All right, now we're, uh, we're gonna get the bolts, see how big the bolts are and uh, start prepping to drill the holes. Okay guys, so we've got it cut on, we've got it test fitted, I've made the holes, uh, sorry, I've, I've marked the holes. Now next up we're gonna use a hole punch. So this is a, uh, a small punch that comes with the kit and the, the, it's just designed to put in the center like this and you give it a smack and it'll <clears throat> go ahead and make a small dent in the areas where you wanna drill. If you ever tried to drill steel, the drill travels all over the place, right? So next up, we're just gonna go ahead and mark the holes everywhere we need to and uh, we'll be all set to start drilling. So probably a bit easier will be to take a small drill bit and make the initial holes in the center where I've punched and then get the big one out. Good, now I gotta do the bottom. That ought to be fun. All right guys, I'm gonna continue doing all the holes and uh, I'll get back to you, all right? Let's finish up. Okay guys, I felt bad. I stopped the tutorial, I stopped filming and I went and got what we need for the safety chains. So that way we do it properly. There we go, safety chains ready to go. All right, let's go back home. Okay guys, we're back. Uh, I went to the hardware store. I went and picked up some uh, towing chains. Now do make sure that the chains you get are rated for towing. Uh, they have a better, uh, a stronger brake strength than you know, the standard regular chain. So you're gonna want towing chains uh, and any bolts that are gonna be required to bolt it on here. And I'll show you what I did. And you gotta make sure you get the strongest shear bolts you can, uh, not shear bolts, sorry. You need the strongest bolts you can get, the hardened bolts with the strongest shear strength, brake strength on them as possible, okay? Um, so make sure you get good quality bolts, good quality chains, and, uh, and as well as the fasteners. And uh, now I've gone ahead and spent the last, oh, I don't know, couple of hours um, working on the holes on this thing. They weren't aligned perfectly because I, the biggest bit I had was a half inch and ideally I should have gone with a 916 so I just didn't have any. So it's all done. So now the next step is going to be to clean all the rust off of these things, uh, off of this guy and off of the tip here that I'm going to, uh, that I'm going to take care of. I'm going to use some sanding discs on here. I've got a wire bristle brush, uh, a wire brush that goes on my grinder, on my rotating grinder, and uh, I'll even take out the big grinder and grind down the, uh, the, you know, the worst rust spots if needed. So uh, now we're just gonna clean this up, okay? Let's do it. Now it's important when you're doing this, uh, and you can see I'm just using a sander with some discs here. It's important when you're doing this to get as much of the rust, if not all of the rust off as you can. Uh, I don't really do automotive painting or anything like that, but in terms of rust removal, Rust represents moisture. So if you have any rust deposits on your piece of steel, you basically have moisture still embedded in the metal, okay, in that rust. 
So you need to get all that rust off or else you're just painting over moisture and, and that's contained like within the rust. That's how it was explained to me. So it's really important that you get all of the rust off, okay? So I'm gonna make sure I do a great job and get all of it off of there. And I'll go right down to the metal if I need to. I bought primer, so we'll get this taken care of. By the way, in terms of the good paint that's on here, we don't have to strip the paint right off. We just need to scuff it up. The paint will adhere better to a rough surface. So you just need to scuff it up. And don't worry about using fine grit sandpaper. We're not, we're not trying to get this looking super glossy. Uh, you just want to get it down so it's decently smooth. All the rust is off. All the loose paint is off. And any shiny paint is scuffed up. All right, that's it. Okay guys, we're pretty much done the outside uh, in terms of sanding and getting all the corrosion off. It's looking pretty good. Um, you also have, don't forget, you gotta do your ends here. And for the holes, any of the old holes that have rust inside, I'll just use a round file to get that out. And after that, you gotta do inside. So any of the heavy corrosion that you see that's just in here, you're gonna try and get at it as best you can. Um, you can spray some rust proofing agents in here later, but for now I'll try and get all around the edges here and I'm just gonna do it by hand. I'm just gonna go in there by hand or I'm gonna use a piece of shim, piece of wood with some, uh, with some sandpaper and just try and get around it and get as much of it uh, as I can. All right, so we're getting there. We're almost done, it's looking good. That was tiring, all right, so this is done. This is done, so you can see I've sanded everything down. You can see it, what it looks like. So all the rust is gone. There's a lot of corrosion in there, so probably what I'll do is I'll spray the inside, just the edges with paint, but uh, going forward once a year, I'll just spray an anti-rust treatment, the same kind of anti-rust they put underneath cars. You can buy it in spray cans. I have some, I use it on my trailer hitches, and I'll just spray it in there every year. So uh, now I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna go eat, go do some barbecue, and uh, when I get back, we're going to go ahead and throw on the first coat of primer on these two pieces. And uh, that'll be it for today. Oh yeah, dinner is cooking. Mm -hmm. All right guys, dinner is done. So we are ready for the next step. Now, by the way, obviously, if you have a galvanized trailer, you don't need to be doing any of this. You could just go ahead, drill your holes, and when you're all set, go ahead and assemble everything. Uh, but for those of you that have a painted trailer like me, well, we gotta go through the whole painting process. So again, much like I mentioned how, you know, starting level is super important, proper paint prep is critical. So it's really important that you get all of the oxidization off, all the loose paint off, get it all, get all the dust off and all that sort of thing. And what I like to do is you can clean this, once you're done, first of all, if this is raw steel, you're gonna wanna clean it with acetone, degreaser. Uh, but you know, seeing as we just sanded the heck out of everything, I am just going to give the whole thing a cleaning with some rubbing alcohol. I'm going to just spray some rubbing alcohol on here, get it all cleaned up, and then uh, we're ready to start painting. And we're going to put our first coat of prime on. And I am just sort of running through my mind how I want to paint it. I think I'm going to paint it standing up, and I'm going to do all up, so that way I can spray in here and do around the holes, and then. And then tomorrow we can flip it the other way and do this side. I think that's the strategy we're going to go with, okay? So let's get this all cleaned up. And we're going to just do the other part. <clears throat> we're going to do the other uh, side of the hitch and uh, we're good to go. All right, so now I don't care too much about overspray on the metal of the trailer here, but I do want to take care of all this part and not spray all over the place. So we are going to go ahead and just put some tape and mask off areas that we don't want paint hitting. And I'll just take a plastic bag and I'll use this to uh, mask the area in general from overspray, you see? So that way we can paint this without getting overspray all over the place. Back here will do just fine. And I don't really care if anything back there gets sprayed. It's uh, not the end of the world. It's mostly just garbage back here. So I think that'll work out just nice. All right, we're good to go. Let's get the spray paint. So uh, we're gonna start with the first coat of primer. Just before we start, guys, if you have not seen, this is, um, this is Rush Check paint that I'm gonna be using. It's Rush Check. This is the brand I will be using, if this would just focus. <laughs> there we go. Rush Check paint, that's what we're gonna be using. This is the primer, and I have a light gray color. Looks like this. <clears throat> and this paint, it's almost the same as this. It's pretty close, good enough. And uh, Rust-Oleum sells these triggers. If you haven't seen these before, these are amazing. And this just goes right on the paint, paint can and lets you spray like this. So you don't have to 
tire your finger and make a mess uh, using the simple nozzle. This just goes on here like that. If I could just get it on there. There you go. And that's it, you're done. So uh, we're gonna just go ahead and shake this up for a bit. Get this uh, all shook up and uh, we'll get started. All right guys, let's get to it. <clears throat> All right, guys, that looks pretty good. We're gonna wait for all this to dry. Uh, this guy in particular, I need to flip him over and do the uh, other side. So I'm not too worried about the bottom part not being evenly coated, uh, but this looks pretty good. So uh, we're gonna have to let this dry 24 hours at least before I can start uh, painting. Um, this guy here, we're gonna do another round uh, later tonight when I can flip them up because if I flip them too quick It's just going to uh, scratch all the paint that I just put on so uh, let's give it a little bit and uh, we'll come back and finish that By the way guys a little trick for you in case you didn't know when you uh, go to put your cans away You don't want to get all blocked next time What you do is get it put a put it in a bucket or a box or something that you don't really care uh, If it gets a bit of paint in it hold the can upside down and spray the inside of the container with the can upside down until there's only air coming out and no paint and that way you've actually cleaned the nozzle out and no more paint will come out then you can store it safely you don't have to worry about the uh, nozzle being all plugged up the next time you use it okay so a little tip on rattle can paint in case you didn't know the next day hey good morning guys welcome to day two and uh now we've got everything primed and ready to go so yesterday we drilled all the holes we took care of all the corrosion we got everything lined up i test fitted everything make sure all the bolts are lined up and uh, now our primer's done and it's nice and dry it's been almost 24 hours uh, so we're ready to proceed with the paint so I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to set this up and what my battle plan is to paint this guy uh, because I can't do it all in one shot because everything needs to be painted all angles interior uh, so I'm going to show you guys kind of my strategy for that and we're going to do two coats of paint um, in terms of this particular paint you know you need to obviously read the instructions but you can do one coat and then recoat with a second one an hour later so that's what we're gonna do okay all right so for this guy here we're gonna stick to just having this set up with the plastic I'm gonna put the garbage bag over here again so that way we get uh, you know we're, we'll be able to paint all this in one shot okay now for this guy here um, I'm gonna be able I need to be able to paint the whole thing so I'm gonna do it in sort of two different sections I'm gonna put this piece of wood here to get this off of the bucket Lay it down here like that. I'm gonna paint the top and the sides and all in here. And I'm gonna do my two coats. One coat, one, I'm gonna do my two coats on this guy. And then when that, once the two coats are done, I'm then gonna flip this over and I'm gonna do the underside for two coats. That's kind of my plan for that, all right? Uh, so yeah, so let's get it started. Okay guys, that's it for the uh, first coat. So this guy's done completely first coat. And the other guy, like I said, we did all three sides and the ends. And I'm gonna come back in an hour, do a second coat. We're gonna let that dry for a while. And then I'm gonna flip over uh, the other piece and we're gonna go ahead and do two coats on that one. And then after that, we're gonna let it dry for a couple of days, make sure it gets nice and uh, hardened up before I go and start sliding other pieces on it. If I start to reassemble it too quickly, it's just gonna scrape all the paint off. We got to give it time to really cure and adhere to the metal properly, okay? So uh, let's give it a break and we'll be back. Okay guys, second coat of paint is done. So uh, I've, this is done, done, done. We don't have to touch this anymore. And the other piece behind me, uh, the top has done the second coat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and carefully take off this mask that I have. And um, this guy here, we're gonna let it dry until this evening and then I'll flip it over and we'll do the two coats. And, uh, and uh, that'll be it until it's time to uh, reassemble everything, okay? There we go guys. That's what it looks like all finished. So we are good to go. And you can see we've painted the inside of it. So that's it, all right, so let's wait and then we're gonna uh, go ahead and finish up this guy here. That'll be next. So we're gonna wait till he's dry and flip it over and uh, do the underside. Oh. 
three days later. Welcome to day three. Day three, the final day. Today's the big day, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna finish up this install. So it has been three days that our painted pieces have been curing. Uh, after the first 24 hours, I actually took this one and put it on top of the air vent in my house. And now the surface is no longer tacky. After the first 24 hours, it might still be kind of sticky. The paint is still quite weak. So if I start putting pieces on here, it's just gonna destroy the paint. So I really wanted to make sure that that tackiness was gone and the paint had hardened up. So it has been three days. Um, and the strategy here is gonna be to start from the trailer, working our way towards the front, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually install the chains, the safety chains that need to be bolted in here because if I go ahead and put the fold away tongue adapter on here, all these bolts will be installed and it'll be in the way. So I'm gonna start off with this, then we're gonna install this, we're slowly gonna move our way forward, and then the final part will be to go ahead and uh, redo the wiring, all right? Now, just a quick note, any bolts that I use uh, where the nuts are not nylon nuts uh, to help keep them in place, I will be using Loctite, okay? So if you guys haven't seen this, this is Loctite. So you're gonna wanna make sure you wanna use some of that Loctite on there, okay? Okay guys, chains are done. So now the next step is to put on our uh, folding uh, connector on here. Let's get it. All right, looks good. So now we're gonna go ahead and just put uh, all the bolts in, get all the bolts put in place and bolt it in, okay? Uh, and the kit does come with a Allen key because these bolts do have a type of uh, uh, a hex key head. So it did come with it. So we're gonna get everything we need and uh, start putting this back together. And uh, then we can start on this separate piece. All right, let's do it. Whew, guys, <laughs> that took some that took some brute strength. So uh, turns out that the nuts uh, that are included with the fold-out kit are actually tapered at the ends. So it acts kind of like a nylon nut, so you don't need to put the Loctite on the ones that come with this. It tightens right up. But uh, yeah, I guess because my the holes that I drilled are so right on the size needed, the half inch, which was the biggest one I had, you really gotta work them to get them to tighten down properly. And uh, yeah, it took a bit of muscle, so I'm a little scared about the next one. So I think for the next piece, what we're gonna do is, um, I think I'm gonna actually connect it, put the uh, two bolts in here, and screw it on that way, bolt it on that way. Let's, let's do that next, okay? Let's do it. Whew. So that's it for that. Uh, <laughs> that's some exercise. I didn't have to go to the gym today, although gyms are closed with quarantine, so who cares? So next up, uh, before I go ahead and put on the actual tongue attachment here for the ball, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a bracket that I bought to hold the chains. So the chains need to be held up like that and then go to the truck. So I bought a, um, a U-bolt that I'm gonna bolt in here just to hold these chains like that. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get that installed. Let's do that next. All right guys, that's it, we're good to go. So, there's our chains. Pull them out of there as needed. 
and uh, we're all set. So now the next step is going to be installing the tongue back on here, uh, the receiver. I'm making all my fresh paint all dirty. That's okay. So uh, yeah, so that's it. So we'll do that. Let's get that hooked up and then it will be time for uh, some wiring. Let's do it. Next up included in the kit came these two little rubber grommet pad things. Now it doesn't actually show in the instructions or in the schematics where these go, but there are two holes on the inside right here where these are supposed to go. Uh, for some reason, I'm not sure why, but it is missing from the instructions. So let's try and put those in because it doesn't look like it'll be easy. Let's try it. I'm thinking this is a job for a screwdriver. Okay, let's see. Do some surgery here. That's one. All right, so mini, mini flathead screwdriver is key here. There it is. Done. That's done. Now comes the finesse part. We're gonna do some wiring. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get um, the solder pieces that I wanna use here. Uh, I've used these before uh, on previous videos. They're great, I'll show you guys that. And I'm gonna go get the uh, new wiring that I purchased, all right? Hey guys, okay. So, final step guys, and it is to do the wiring. So, now the first thing I did is I added a wire, uh, a rubber grommet in here, okay? That's just to protect the, uh, the wire from rubbing up against the metal. Now, I've been using trailers for a long time, and I'll be honest with you, these things never stay in there. But listen, you do need to put one in. Even the factory ones that were on this trailer when we did this mod were gone. They weren't even on here. So I'll go ahead, put one on. Uh, I had some extras, but you know, who knows how long that'll stay. And then I have my extra piece, okay? So I'm using a four pin on this guy. Um, I'm gonna stick with the four pin. That way anybody, uh, you know, my truck has both the, uh, what is it, the six pin, the big round adapter, eight or six, I think it's six and a four pin, but not everyone has a four pin. So if I need somebody else to tow my trailer, I want it to be as compatible as possible. So I'll keep, I'll stick with the four pin um, and I've got an extra length here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep as much length as, as possible. I only cut off the end. I'm gonna feed it through and I'm gonna leave this extra. And then once we get the truck connected and we can see how long we need, I'll just zip tie the rest inside the tube so I've got some extra, okay? So let's go ahead and feed it through here. We're gonna do this very carefully because I don't want to screw up the grommet already this quick this quick in the game. Let's see where's the wire going. Okay, here we go. We got some wire. Finally. There, let's assume that's enough for the for the truck. Now, the way it works on the trailer is there are uh, three primary wires. There's brown, yellow, and green, okay? So uh, brown would be for your constant light on. Yellow and, red, uh, yellow and green would be left and right signal lights and brakes. And white is your common ground. So the white is actually grounded to the trailer. Um, so we're actually gonna peel this off and it comes out and bolts to the bottom here. Um, so just double check, obviously, when you did your wiring, when you took your wiring apart on your trailer, uh, take note of where your wires were placed. That way you won't have any confusion, okay? So um, next step for me is gonna be to split this wire and then feed the old wires through and get them over here and make our connections, okay? So let's do that. So now, in order for me to get this, I have to thread it through a hole that's in the bottom of the trailer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use an old piece of this wire as a fish. So I'm gonna feed an old piece of wire up through here and then bring it through here. I'll tape it to the new wire and pull it through, okay? Let's start with that. Okay, there we go. All right, that's done. Just gonna get some electrical tape to connect these two together. Let's see if we can get that through. Where we go, we got it. There you go, that's the ground wire and it's gonna connect with a bolt right underneath there. So that's done. So now we can start reconnecting this. I'm just gonna feed the old wires through. That ought to be fun. Just like that. So let's splice all this. So I'm gonna get all this ready. So I'm gonna splice these wires, expose some of the copper, and uh, we'll go from there.
Okay guys, so you can see here we've got everything spliced and ready to go. Two browns are gonna be together like that. And then we've got our yellow and our green. So let's get the connectors. Here are the connectors I was talking about. Um, now I'll put a link in the description below, of course, to stuff that we've used here, including these connectors. I've used them before. And you can see here, in this connector, there is the solder, the uh, shrink wrap, and there's these little colored bars in there. It's like a glue uh, that glues and grips onto the wire. Now the key to using these is not to be like shrink wrap. You need to use a lot of heat. Shrink wrap, you just go with the heat gun a little bit and it's good to go. This, you really gotta boil it onto the wire. So I've used these before, they're fantastic. You can't pull them apart if you've done it properly. So this is what we're gonna use. So uh, let's get the wires ready and we're gonna put these on. All right, we're gonna use the blue size. So we're gonna need three of these. Okay, let's get, let's get the brown ones done first. So remember, you put this on, make sure you put these on the wire first before you start closing up anything or else you're gonna realize you made a big boo-boo. And we're in the business of not making boo-boos. So what I do is I take the wires and I cross them over halfway, and then I'll twist them together. So, there we go. That's it, and then we just slide that over. Let me zoom in a bit more so you can see what's happening here. There we go, so you guys can see I've got the, the little heat track, the heat shrink crimp right over, and now we're gonna go ahead and heat this baby up and get it all sealed. Make sure the other wires are not in the way. Okay. Like I said, guys, lots of heat. Nothing's gonna catch fire, don't worry about it. And you'll know that it's ready when the solder starts to spread all over the wire. That's how you know you've got it hot enough. There we go. Guys, I'm not joking you, okay? I used to think these things were a gimmick, but they are the deal, they work amazing. I've used them many, many times, and when done properly, it will hold just as solid as if I would have sat here and soldered it and then put the shrink wrap. These things work great. The key is just to use an excessive amount of heat on the solder. So there you go, that's done. So let's go ahead and do the two others. There we go guys, okay, so now we just need to let this cool off before I start trying to yank on it. But you can see, I'm not gonna pull on that one yet, I just did it, but this one here is, let me see if I give it, see look, it's crazy how strong it is guys, it just doesn't go anywhere, so this is good to go. All right, so next up, we're gonna just hook up the ground. Okay, so the next step here is we're gonna take a little round connector like this, and we're gonna crimp it onto the ground wire right here. And then this will be bolted with a self-tapping screw. This is the one that was already in the trailer. Put it through and we're gonna bolt it in. I'm gonna put a little bit of dielectric grease and I'm gonna take a file and I'm gonna just file the inside of the hole that this screws into to get rid of any paint to make sure that the threads are having a metal on metal contact. We don't want it on the paint because we might have a poor ground contact. So let's, uh, let's do that next. There we go, so that's on now, check that, made sure it was nice and tight, and uh, now we'll just go ahead and prep that hole under there with the little hole file. All right, there's the uh, dielectric grease we're going to use right there. So this is uh, Permatex dielectric grease, don't need just a little tiny little bit, it'll do it. There we go. And we're gonna thread the extra back in here. I'm just gonna tie wrap this to give it some strength and uh, that'll be it guys. Then we're gonna get the truck and uh, test it out. Make sure everything works properly. Let's do it. There you go guys, all set. Pop this in here like that. 
Here we go. Beauty. All right, let's get the truck out and see how this looks. By the way, one more critical little step just before we do that, make sure you've actually fastened your hinge bolt on. Uh, you've been watching me do this in the video and I've actually only got it on here loose. So we're gonna tighten up that hinge bolt and then we'll get the truck. <laughs> All right, so the chains are a bit long. Yeah, so we're gonna shorten the chains up a little bit. We're gonna remove one, two, three, four, five, six links. Yeah, so six links need to come off the chain, and this looks great. Let's, uh, let's test out the lights, make sure the lights are all working the way they should be before we go any further, all right? Let's do that. We're good to go, guys, we got everything. All the lights are working. Just, I've got one light that's busted over there that needs to be fixed. Perfect, all right, let's disconnect this. We'll make our modifications that we wanna to do to the, uh, to the chains, and uh, we're good to go. And here you go, guys, this is the finished product. So here we go, get a little tour, and it works out perfectly. The tongue hits the spare tire, so it won't bang up. There you go. And then it just opens up like so and pins in, and we're good to go. Extremely happy with this, guys. It's a great install. Love it. We're good to go, guys. Whew, that was a heck of an install. Good job, thanks a lot for following along. And I hope this helped you quite a bit, this walkthrough and show you that if you, you can take your time, it doesn't take five minutes, it does take numerous hours to get this done. But when done properly, you get this awesome fold away tongue. And now I've got so much more room here. I mean, before I could, you can't walk over this or back there you saw at the beginning of the video, I couldn't get through. So now I'll be able to gain another foot and a half in behind so by keeping this closer to the garage. So I am super happy with this installation. And uh, again, guys, if you're thinking about putting one of these Fulton trailer hitches on, uh, check out the link in the description below for the three inch version of this. Uh, and you can also get the other sizes for your trailer. And a couple of final notes, you know, just make sure when doing this, you get the proper equipment, you get the chains that are, you know, for your boat. This is a very light, light tin boat. You know, this, this whole rig is like, I don't know, probably a thousand pounds, 1200 pounds. This isn't a 4,000 pound bass boat rig with dual axle trailer and all the, all, the, all the trimmings. So obviously you'll need much heavier duty equipment, uh, heavier duty chains uh, and things like that and tow hooks, uh, the, the, the safety chain hooks and that sort of thing. You'll need all of those. So make sure you get the right ones for your boat, uh, weight and, and brake uh, rated for the size that you need. And uh, that's it guys, if you have any questions, you know where to reach me, comments down below, hit me up with any questions or comments. Other than that, thanks again for joining me guys. Take it easy, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button please if you like this, if this helped you, and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace, later.